Before you can put a needle to the fabric, we need to talk about the supplies necessary for shatter work. So let's look at the board first. And what I brought with you are my marking pens. The first pen is a fabric, a blue fabric marker. And I usually choose the finest point available. <clears throat> now this marker can wash out with water. That's why I like to use it the best of all. And the next one is a Dixon pencil. Now this pencil is actually a chalk based pencil. So um, if you're working on a fabric where you're concerned as to whether or not the fabric pen will wash out, this is your choice. The next one is just a plain old mechanical pencil. These pencils are really good for keeping a nice sharp point, but it can be a little challenging to get the marks out, so keep that in mind before starting. Now the next one I want to show you is, of course, the scissors. Scissors are very, very important in embroidery. I need you to buy, if you can, the best quality you can afford. I'm going to suggest either a Ginger or a Stollinger or anything like that that um, has a nice sharp point and a very sharp blade is good for embroidery. And also a small size works best. Now, of course, you can't do any embroidery without needles and threads. So for shadow work, I'm going to suggest some very simple suggestions. First of all, the stranded cotton is available in two brands, and we're all familiar with those brands. Uh, a lot of people refer to it as simply DMC, but I prefer to call it stranded cotton since DMC makes many types of threads. Another thread that I like to use is Floche. Now, Floche is made by both companies also, um, DMC and Anchor. And this happens to be a thread that I recommend highly for shadow work because it's about one and a half times the thickness of regular stranded cotton. Therefore, you get a lot of nice coverage on the back. And, and that's very important with shadow work. The next thing I want to show you is um, needles. Of course, you can't do embroidery without needles. Um, the type of needles you choose depends on the type of thread you choose. So if you're using flow, you'd like to use probably a round eye needle. A seven between is also is a very good size for that and it works really good for opening up the um, holes in the fabric well. Um, but for stranded cotton, I suggest a long eye needle, such as a cruel needle or an embroidery needle, in a size 9, 10. Sometimes you can go up to a 7 if you're a beginner. It gives you a nice opening in the fabric. Um, the next thing I use is a shaping board or a pinning board. Now pinning boards are good for transferring the design. The designs that you put on the fabric must be accurate because if they're not it's going to be very difficult to get the, the line straight when you're stitching so you want to take extra care in making them nice and smooth when you transfer. Now I also brought with me an embroidery hoop. Now this hoop is different because it's made and designed with a lip on the outside. And shadow work is so important to get the fabric nice and taut in the frame. So that's why I recommend this one. Although you've probably seen me use a sit-on frame in my embroidery, for shadow work I really prefer to use a hand hoop. And a size 4 through 6 is best of all. Now, with your shaping board, you're going to need some pins. And the pins act as um, an agent to hold the fabric in place, so you don't have to do that with your fingers. And these pins are nice little applique pins. They're very short, and you can get your fabric nice and tight. And you'll see later on how I do that and how important it is. And last of all, magnification. You're going to need some sort of magnification. Good light and a nice magnifier or just simply little readers that you buy are perfect for doing embroidery. And if you wear bifocals, you can wear them right on top or you can get the cute kind that just clip on. And don't forget about the fabric choices. Fabrics are important. As long as you use a fabric that you can see your hand coloration through, and let me show you what I'm talking about at, at, with the sample I brought. I'm going to lift my hand and just bring it underneath and you can see a slight coloration of fabric, of skin through the fabric, then it's appropriate for shadow work. It can be smooth or um, PK or whatever. It's no problem. Now, I brought with me today this little pillow with this little ducky on it. I used this pillow in my beginning embroidery, shadow work embroidery classes because it's a great design that shows the type of techniques I like to use. Now, here's the design. 
you're going to need a really crisp design, dark enough to see through your fabric. So uh, I went ahead and made the lines especially thick or thicker for that, pr that purpose. And of course, I'm going to be using my pinning board. So the first thing you're going to do is position your design down on the board. And then take your fabric and Ideally, you would have your fabric starched and ironed at this point, and I usually like to have my fabric starched side up. Now, with my applique pins, I'm going to make a little puddle here. I always do this so I can go quickly. But I'm going to start in the beginning, and I'm going to start pinning on an angle, or place your pin on an angle, rather, and then pull the fabric down tightly, not super tight, but tightly so that it's smooth across the design. And we're going to pin the design down on all four corners or all four sides. And then every inch and a half or so, we're going to put another pin. Now we're going to keep doing this until you have pins completely around the design. And leave enough space inside that you can trace the design. Now, I'm uh, trained as an artist, and uh, I know this is an unusual thing to mention, but a lot of people like to sketch as they draw. Actually, it's best if you hold the pen down against the fabric and draw your lines with one fell swoop. And instead of doing a sketchy type of drawing, this makes a, a clearer, more accurate line. Bring your pen around. Now, if you're using this this water soluble pen, you know that it gets darker as it dries, so you don't really have to keep going over it and over it and over it until it's um, so fat that you can't embroider with it.